Hey everyone, it's Rachel, and you've seen me dye yarn with Kool-Aid. Now you're gonna see me paint a picture with Kool-Aid. While I'm swatching, I figured I would talk about where this video is coming from. Uh, I'm in a Discord chat server thing with a bunch of other YouTube artists, and one of them posted with this idea of doing kind of a open-ended collab where you can use whatever colors you can find, you can paint whatever you want, but it has to be Kool-Aid. And all the links are gonna be in the description box below of the person who started it and all that participated in it. Um, I got 11 colors at the store and I thought I'd swatch them all, kind of get an idea. I did water them down a decent amount to get more of a watercolor feel. Um, I wanted to be able to layer and um, have all that. And I also, since they were, I did the swatches too close and they're all running together, I just did little um, squares at the end just to keep them separate and have a really good idea of what the colors look like on their own before I start combining. So here is the whole list of swatches with the Kool-Aid I got. And since I haven't been participating in mermaid, here's a mermaid picture I've been working on this past week. Um, I'm using whatever uh, multimedia paper I got from Walmart. And I'm just taping it on to my light box this light box I actually got from a thrift store for $5. So if you're starting out like me, and I mean, I've been collecting some of this stuff for a couple of years, I'm working on art on and off, but I'm really focusing on my art now. And if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of money to invest, going to thrift stores and um, going on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, you can really find a lot of good um, tools to, to get you going. So you don't have to invest a lot. And that's kind of where what I wanna show during my art journey is you don't have to invest a lot right away. You can build up slowly. You can get secondhand things. But right now I'm just tracing the image that I drew since the original is really dirty and I wanted clean lines and I wanted to ink over them before I start painting. Um, I did, it's kind of choppy because I cut out a bunch. I didn't realize what the angle uh, until I, I was done recording that my head is in pretty much every thing. So I'm gonna, next time, I'm gonna do a different angle so this is not a problem. But, um, but yeah, so that's where I am. I'm almost finished with this. And um, I, just to like kind of preface before we start painting, is my original SD card decided to die partway through recording. So the first part of my painting is lost and that's very unfortunate, but oh well, the show must go on. I will, keep going and um, all of that. So as I'm putting this on my board, I have like a wooden clip, like it's not wood wood, it's chip, not chipboard. I'm trying to think of the right word. But anyway, it's, it's a clipboard. It's what I like to paint on and um, it keeps my paintings all nice. So as you see, we jumped to a partially painted picture. Unfortunately, I lost all that. But um, I really tried to get um, like a skin tone color and I did that by mixing lemonade, peach mango, and pink lemonade together for the initial all over skin tone, the lightest one. And then to darken it up for shading and darker skin tones to kind of br bring a little bit of depth in here, um, I added some of the darker pinks like the watermelon the sp uh what is it called charcoalberry fin and um i think i did add some cherry a little bit for to warm up the face and the shoulders and for the tail and the 
bra top thing. I used all the pinks. I um, pinks and reds for the tail. So pink lemonade, watermelon, charcoalberry fin, cherry, and black cherry were all incorporated in bringing um, hopefully some shape and depth into um, what what she's wearing. And um, and then I used black cherry and grape for the deeper shadows throughout. Um, I really was trying to bring some depth and purple was the darkest and then black cherry was the next darkest. So I tried to use those to bring some depth and shading. The hair is um, all is lemonade, mango, the mango peach or peach mango, whatever it's called. And I layered on a little bit of black cherry and grape to bring in some color variation and depth, hopefully. But um, I feel like I, I really love this picture. And for the first time drawing a mostly full body, I think I did pretty good. I feel like the torso is too long. Um, I don't know why I keep making torsos so long, but um, you know, it's something to work on in the future. This is my first time actually doing hands and I spent hours erasing and redrawing these hands and I really like how they finally turned out. They're not perfect, but you know, I'm at pretty much the beginning of my journey here and I'm okay with not perfect. We're just, we're learning, we're progressing here. And uh, so yeah, I really like this picture. Uh, the kind of idea I got behind, I started drawing her and I wanted some, um, I didn't want her to look too stagnant. I wanted some kind of direction. And I was like, oh, I should have an arm up. I should, you know, try to provide movement. And with that, I was like, well, what should I have her holding something? Because I didn't want just the hands kind of out there. So I thought, oh, well, she could be holding cards or something. And it kind of developed into um, this kind of fortune teller kind of vibe. So once I drew the cards, I was like, oh, she could be like a fortune teller. She could be holding up tarot cards, which I did not put very much detail into. Um, I hadn't done the research for that. So I just left them shaded and blank. And I was like, well, one hand she could be holding tarot cards. The other hand she could be holding something that's like, um, like a crystal ball. And um, I don't know why... I don't know if anyone else is like this, but um, thinking of fortune tellers, I think of, it's probably just from like movies and memories of movies and shows and like stereotypical fortune tellers, but I added a mole just because I feel like a lot of fortune tellers that I've seen stereotypically like in movies and shows had um, some kind of facial mole. And so I thought I'd add it. I really like the addition, trying to um, add new character to her and not just have the same old perfect blank face. Um, I kind of struggled with the eyes. They were, you know, trying to get color in there. And the Kool-Aid was taking a while at this point to soak into the paper. So I was trying to add multiple colors and add depth and I really should have been more patient added one color let it soak in add another color but I was trying I really want I've done this with acrylics and um, and stuff where making eyes I kind of add water watered down acrylics and they swirl together and they make this kind of cool effect on the eyes. So I was trying to do that with the watercolor and it was just bleeding everywhere. The lips I had to redo a lot because they were just bleeding everywhere. And um, I think I lost the footage, the last footage of me doing finishing touches to this picture. So um, while it's on my mind, I just really quickly wanted to talk about, I did break out my acrylic white and add highlights and some rim lighting on one side. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Whew. 
my monitor started to going going to sleep sorry <laughs> but um, so I did to add a little bit more depth I did break out the acrylic paint since this was very open-ended and there were really very few rules where the only rule was use Kool-Aid <laughs> um, I thought it was okay to break that out to get a picture that I really like and I like how she turned out um, I really wanted kind of these mesmerizing green eyes and I think I mostly achieved that but um, but yeah I Kool-Aid it's been interesting I figured oh well there's no sugar in it it's not gonna be sticky but any all the Kool-Aid that kind of got on that the masking tape around it and kind of dried on there um, it kept sticking on my arm and um, that wasn't fun but <laughs> um, but yeah it's it was fun I really enjoyed working with Kool-Aid more than I thought I would I thought this would be a harder challenge but I was able I feel like I was able to really get it to look very watercolor-esque and I liked the depth that was able to come I couldn't decide on a on a um, what source of light to begin with so I feel like the shading and the highlights are a little bit all, all over the place um, by the end of the picture I was thinking it was coming from her left and down and um, so that's where a lot of the highlights ended up at the end but um, so I need I need to practice planning ahead more and doing all of that but you know um, I'll learn um, as we go <laughs> and um, trial by error and hopefully I'll get better with deciding ahead of time point of view or not point of view but where the light source is coming from and where it's going and all of that um but i'm trying to think oh um and then i didn't record any of doing my line work because i was really nervous it was my first time doing line work on an art piece and um i i mean oh there it goes it's bleeding <laughs> i uh the struggle with these eyes. I think I finally got a decent um, eye color, but they were bleeding everywhere. The lips were bleeding. Uh, it was the face was kind of a mess, but I think I kind of figured it out. But um, back to the line work, I did mess it up in some places when I was initially doing the line work. So I thought, oh well, I'll go back and reline it now that the paint has kind of faded the lines, make the lines more prominent. And uh, I feel like I messed up even more when I was doing this after the picture was done and I was doing a second round of line work. Um, so some places the line work is super thick and I tried to even it out and I messed up. But you know, for first time doing line work, I think it's not too bad. And um, as time goes, I won't be making as many mistakes you know the I'll get better and better I guess is what I'm saying but um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to talk about oh um, so I tried to use as many colors as possible and I think I used pretty much every color except for orange I didn't realize that I hadn't touched the orange until we were finished Okay, so I added a little bit more time, but I'm still gonna talk fast. But this is the picture all finished. I'm just taking it off the board. I know the uh, borders are all funky. I'll work on that next time. But I really like how it ended up. Um, I'm sorry I lost all the stuff for the highlights, the footage, but here it is. Thank you for watching and check out all the other links in the description below. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a good week. Bye.